This is the GIS Evening Report for Friday, July 5th, 2024. I am Chris Ann Mitchell. In today's newscast, we focus on relief efforts in Karakou and Piti Martnik and assistance given in the wake of Hurricane Burial. We'll take more after the break. The Government of Grenada and the Planning Committee of the National Cleanup Drive empathizes with residents affected by the passage of Hurricane Beryl. We are committed to working with you to rebuild your communities, re-establish livelihoods, and restore families. As we commence the process of recovery, we are reaching out to you to assist with waste removal, with support from volunteers who will come to your community. A national cleanup drive is planned for Saturday, 6th July, for your community, starting at 5 a.m. To expedite the process, you are encouraged to place all waste, such as wood and galvanize, on the roadside, near the closest accessible point for collection teams. Please note that each waste type must be placed separately. For example, wood must be placed on its own, galvanized on its own, tree limbs and other green waste separately. The National Cleanup Drive is geared to assist with helping to restore a clean environment ahead of the rebuilding and restoration process. We look forward to working with everyone for a successful cleanup. A message from the Ministry of Implementation and Transformation, Ministry of Climate Resilience, the Environment and Renewable Energy, the Ministry of Infrastructure, the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority, and the National Disaster Management Agency. Welcome back. Karakou and Piti Martnik are about to experience a major relief drive and the government of Grenada has procured 11 vehicles to support this undertaking. A barge owned by West Indies Shipping Dominica is transporting the vehicles to the Sister Isles which were hard hit by Hurricane Burial. Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Carlene McQuilkin, was also at the port as government of Grenada through the Ministry of Finance procured vehicles from different dealerships on island. P.S. McQuilkin thanked those involved in the procurement process. I am very happy on behalf of the Ministry of National Security, Information, Disaster Management, Public Administration and Prime Minister's Office to report that we have uh, procured 11 vehicles for efforts, restoration efforts in Karakou. As we know, tomorrow and Sunday have been designated as the days for restoration or rebuilding efforts on Grenada, Karakou and PT Martin on the island. And so we have procured these um, 11 vehicles. Now they are three trucks from Hubbard's. Five Toyota Hilux from Steels Auto Supplies Limited and also three um, Nissan from George F. Huggins and Company, uh, Grenada Limited. And the, these items are to assist with the cleanup efforts and so, with relief and so, because um, you know a lot of the vehicles and so in Karakou were damaged as well. And so uh, the, we need some heavy equipment in Karakou so that they can move around the terrain and assist with the restoration efforts. So hence we have purchased these vehicles. I want to say a very special thank you to each of the suppliers, Steels, Hubbards and uh, um, Huggins. Because um, it was yesterday we would have made a request uh, to them and they would have organized everything, including insurance, license, inspections and everything. And we want to say a very special thank you for the, to them for assisting us on such uh, short notice. Also want to say thank you to the Customs and Excise uh, Division, Ministry of Finance, because it's true Ministry of Finance would have purchased the vehicles and to the Customs for facilitating the process uh, so seamlessly. Also, the Inland Revenue Division with the license discs and so on. Everything was just um, done with alacrity. Captain of the barge, Michael Patrice, explained how they became involved in the initiative. I came down here on a request by someone by the name of Mr. Orlando to assist the government of Grenada to transport stuff to Karakou, whatever they has to transport. And uh, the badge is 5,000 tons dead weight, but it can take a lot of stuff like cars and trucks and stuff like that. Patrice is happy to assist the government of Grenada with transporting equipment and vehicles to the Sister Isles and told us about his team. That's great. I appreciate that. Um, what the owner did for the government because my relatives come from Pitimatnik too, and Karakou. 
So what we are doing here is not only for him, but for me also, you know. And um, I appreciate that. It's eight of us. Yeah, eight of us. Two engineers, um, myself, the mate, and then we have a welder and some other seamen. The government of Grenada has announced restricted access to the hurricane-ravaged islands of Karakou and Petit Martinique as plans are put in motion for rebuilding. During a press conference at the NADMA headquarters on Thursday, Member of Parliament for St. George Northeast, Honorable Ron Redhead, said the island is still under a state of emergency and stringent measures are in place to limit the number of persons visiting the islands. This means no unauthorized travel to these islands. It is not permitted. If you want to deliver supplies, this should be coordinated in Grenada with NADMA. You can contact relief at gov.gd. That's the email address. Contact relief, R-E-L-I-E-F, at gov.gd and request permission to travel to provide relief supplies but you are not permitted to travel until you receive approval. If you're already on your way, you can drop your supplies uh, with NADMA at Tyrell Bay in Karakou, but you will not be allowed to disembark. NADMA is coordinating regular shipments of supplies, equipment, and other relief efforts to the island, hence governments move to restrict access at this time. MP Redhead led an advanced team to the island on Friday ahead of 200 volunteers who will visit the island via a charter trip in two batches of 100 on Saturday and Sunday respectively to assist in the ongoing cleanup campaign. I, as Member of Parliament, will lead the mission and support the relief effort over the weekend. So that is Saturday and Sunday. We have an amount of uh, new vehicles will be sent in addition to what is already on the island in advance of Friday. And preparations are being made to uh, have that done uh, before the weekend. We will have up to 100 volunteers per day to travel on the Osprey, which is going to be chartered to Karakou on both Saturday and Sunday, departing early and returning the same day on both days. Volunteers would be coordinated through an established and experienced groups such as the Red Cross, the Rotary Club, and others. This will be challenging work, and as such, we are only seeking at this time abled body individuals who are 18 years and older to volunteer. Volunteers are required to be able-bodied, self-contained for the trip with food and water. Meanwhile, on the mainland, Ministry of Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation, led by the Honorable Andy Williams, along with the Ministry of Infrastructure and the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority, will lead a massive cleanup drive on the western and northern side of the mainland from 5 a.m. on Saturday, July 6th, and Sunday, July 7th. Honorable Andy Williams says as a country, there is a need to stand together in the rebuilding process. He says while citizens have already displayed extraordinary acts of courage in the aftermath of the Category 4 hurricane, there is a need for us to take the spirit of resilience further. This cleanup is more than picking up debris or clear nodes. We have formed our commitment to each other and to place and to the place we call home. We show the world that St. Patrick and St. Mark is not defined by, by a disaster, but by the spirit of its inhabitants, and a spirit that cannot be broken. The efforts will be coordinated through the parliamentary offices. So that will be the meeting point for everyone who wants to come and take part and who, who does not have a transport. So we will have buses carrying you from from the various constituencies to St. Mark and St. Patrick. And one of the reasons why we are doing that is because we don't want everyone to gather in one area in St. Patrick or St. Mark, but we are going to coordinate the efforts accordingly and it, it will be according to the constituency. People who have access to equipment like chainsaws, cutlass and rakes are kindly asked to walk with them. This is a start and we ask everyone to come out and show your support because the people of St. Mark and St. Patrick have been hit hardest 
on this island, Grenada. And we're asking you to come out and show support to them, not just um, support to work, but also emotional support. And we are asking people, if you can walk with some food also, please feel free to do so. Um, and anything that will make the, their efforts more meaningful. So this weekend will be a weekend where we ask the nation to come out and show your, solid, your solidarity, show what we are made of. And Grenadians, we are resilient people. And let's show the world what we can do. We take a break more when we return. The government of Grenada and the planning committee of the National Cleanup Drive empathizes with residents affected by the passage of Hurricane Beryl. We are committed to working with you to rebuild your communities, re-establish livelihoods, and restore families. As we commence the process of recovery, we are reaching out to you to assist with waste removal, with support from volunteers who will come to your community. A national cleanup drive is planned for Saturday, 6th July, for your community, starting at 5 a.m. To expedite the process, you are encouraged to place all waste, such as wood and galvanize, on the roadside, near the closest accessible point for collection teams. Please note that each waste type must be placed separately. For example, wood must be placed on its own, galvanized on its own, tree limbs and other green waste separately. The National Cleanup Drive is geared to assist with helping to restore a clean environment ahead of the rebuilding and restoration process. We look forward to working with everyone for a successful cleanup. A message from the Ministry of Implementation and Transformation, Ministry of Climate Resilience, the Environment and Renewable Energy, the Ministry of Infrastructure, the Grenada Solid Waste Management Authority, and the National Disaster Management Agency. Welcome back. Government has implemented measures to provide relief and support to affected communities and families throughout mainland and in Karakou and Spiti Marknik following the devastating impact of Hurricane Beryl. The Disaster Relief Fund has been activated through the government's online portal pay.gov.gd. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell explained during a press conference on Thursday that the relief fund is part of a medium to long-term process toward the restoration of lives and livelihoods. Since the passage of Hurricane Beryl on Monday, government has been collaborating with NADMA, Red Cross, Rotaract, and other agencies to provide support to the areas that were severely affected. Regional and international partners, donors, and citizens in the diaspora can donate toward the relief fund through the direct cash deposit online and wire transfers. And you can start obviously by going to a direct deposit, as in you can walk into the Grenada Cooperative Bank and you can make a direct deposit to the Government of Grenada Natural Disaster Relief Fund. The account number is 12100-4900. So it's at the Grenada Cooperative Bank, you can make a direct deposit to the savings account named Government of Grenada Natural Disaster Relief Fund and the account number 1210 zero four nine zero zero for online transfers you can use a credit or a debit card and again you just have to go to the pay.gov.gd site you select make a payment and under the various options you can pay for select hurricane barrel relief donation and you can choose any amount that you want to contribute from the options provided or you can insert an alternative amount of course we are asking for you to generate uh, for you to donate generously and so the larger these sums uh, the more welcome it is and the more it will be put to uh, better use for international wire transfers you can use the online banking service provided by your bank to send a wire transfer or visit your local branch to make the process completed by an agent Prime Minister Mitchell says relief items must be sent through the National Disaster Management Agency, NADMA, to be exempted from customs duties and charges. It's important, unless you have goods that you simply want to bring to someone individually who you know, if it is not such a case and it is a domestic assistance within Grenada, we are asking you to kindly deliver the goods at the NADMA headquarters in Manjalu so that it can be recorded, so that it could be sorted, and it could be distributed appropriately. For Grenadians in the diaspora, 
or for citizens outside of the diaspora who wish to make a uh, donation of goods and supplies, we are first also asking you, after you've purchased the goods and supplies, to contact the local consulate office for guidance on preferred shipping partners. Because we appreciate if you buy the goods, it still has to be shipped. And if you don't have funds for shipping it, uh, there are preferred shipping agents that uh, the consulate office can use that will allow for the goods to be shipped to Grenada, either at preferred rates or at no charge to you. So it is important, therefore, for you to, in fact, contact the consulate. So if you live in New York, you obviously will con uh, contact the consulate office there. If you're in Miami, you'll contact the consulate office. If you're in Toronto, you contact the consulate office. If you're in London, you contact the High Commissioner there, and they would provide guidance as to the preferred shipping partners. It is important, if you wish for these goods to arrive in Grenada and not attract any customs, duties, etc., for the goods to be addressed to the National Disaster Management Agency, NADMA. These goods are for hurricane relief. NADMA has all of the data via the various government ministries as to the persons who need relief. Not everyone in Grenada is impacted, uh, and not everyone is impacted in the same way. And we want to make sure that the relief goes to persons who are impacted the most and who needs the relief. Key ministries have been tasked to engage bilateral and multilateral partners to seek funding and assistance for recovery and rebuilding post-hurricane burial. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has been tasked together with the Ministry of uh, Environment, Climate Resilience and Renewable Energy uh, with developing the necessary plans both to engage our partners on a bilateral basis and on a multilateral basis uh, to seek the necessary funding and assistance to assist with the recovery and rebuilding efforts in Grenada. And so the Minister for Foreign Affairs, as well as the Minister for Climate Resilience, the Environment and Renewable Energy, uh, will be briefing the public in the coming days. We expect uh, early next week as to the plans, uh, the task force, the persons who would be uh, tasked with uh, the work to ensure that we are treated fairly and that both the multilateral and bilateral relations that we have uh, understand the enormous loss and damage that Grenada has suffered and will continue to suffer as a result of the passage of uh, Hurricane Barrow. NADMA has begun the process of delivering relief supplies to affected families in St. Patrick East and West constituencies following the passage on July 1st of the most powerful storm to affect the Tri-Island State since the passage of Hurricane Ivan on September 7, 2004. Hurricane Beryl left a number of families without roofs and in some cases completely destroyed their homes. The GIS team spoke with some of the affected recipients in the St. Patrick East constituency of La Vera, La Fortune and River Sally who suffered severe damage to their homes. In that situation, I find the, um, he start moving quickly, start operating quickly. As soon as the storm passed, the hurricane passed, you know, he started working, working on things as quick as possible, especially on St. Patrick's side, La Fortune Livera side, yes, with the assistance. So I would say the thanks very much to the government because seeing that the hurricane just passed in a few days' time, you know, I received a few assistance well. Around going and the people saying that um, the government is the best. Um, they, 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 they can so far, yeah, it's the best. Because I mean, they come out and look for the people and, and keep us on track from beginning to the end. And then we, we will appreciate that, you know? Yeah, we will appreciate that. Yeah, and we have we to say thanks for the road too. They can, yeah, give us what the road after um, 47 years. Yeah, we get, we get something in the area. So we have we to say thanks to Dick and Mitchell, you know? Very thankful, very, very, very thankful because everybody close, wet, everybody close, sile up, no clothes to put on. You know, it's, it's terrible, it's terrible. Yeah. And, I mean, we, I went past and uh, I mean, we close in damage as how it damage, you know. Yeah. All trees went down, all fruit trees, down on the ground. It's terrible, it's terrible. To the government of Grenada, I thank him very much for the assistance. Yeah, that was given to me right now. How many of, of you in the house? Nine. 
as our crew moved through the St. Patrick East constituency with the NADMA team delivering relief to affected families, more positive sentiments were shared by the residents. Okay, after, after I left the house, I met my cousin below this piece of kitchen here. And we stay and we just witness the whole thing. When I reach here, I was looking because he was witnessing his house destruction and everything. I was he was looking. I said, I better stay with him than I left him alone. So we, we watch everything just breaking down. We watch the roofs go. Just, at that time, you know, you just feel like you like, like, want to cry or something. But you know, you know, there's nothing you could do. You, crying is a waste of time. It was a very quick response because they passed yesterday and now they're back here today to assist us. And I feel very, very happy about that. I've, I've, it's not nice to say, but I mean, I've never received any assistance from governments before. This government is really, really trying, and I appreciate that very much. I lost my home, I lost my farm, I lost a little nursery on the corner here, and lots of crops. I would say they're trying their utmost best because it's not I alone, and there is other people else that need the same assistance that. I need so. I hope everybody get, you know, something back in return so everybody would feel happy. To be truthful, it's only no, today I see, no, from the next morning, one of them come out from Sutter, that me, that me girl too. She come and she asked me my name and thing and she say, well, you know, I don't stay in long because I have to make a lot of wrongs. And it's yesterday and Marie and them passed. And they have a look at it and they see what they see. They see and they take note, they take my name. and well, That was good of them. Yes, but the only thing I say, well, I don't see my minister. Where is he, man? I hear they say he passed. Mm -hmm. I say, no, man, I can't believe he passed. And, and I see him today. And that was good of him. Because I know he couldn't do me that. Because me and him tight. So he couldn't do me that. But I did just waiting. I say, pity Joe. If I don't see him for the rest of the time, I'm going on in the office. Stay with us. We take our final break. And welcome back. The Christian organization Samaritan's Purse has used its DC-8 cargo plane to bring an emergency field hospital along with experienced medical and disaster response team to provide medical care to people affected by hurricane burial in Karakou and Petit Martinique. The emergency field hospital arrived in Grenada on Thursday and marks the second arrival in three days as Samaritan's Purse mobilizes its relief efforts across the Caribbean islands that were affected by Hurricane Beryl. GIS spoke with team lead Peter Hulse about their mission to Grenada and the Sister Isles. The main uh, focus of our mission here um, is bringing the hope of Jesus to people and the way we do that is through providing shelter, providing clean water, providing uh, temporary uh, housing and tarping uh, for people's roofs um, to get them back uh, started in their lives again. Um, and really that's the way we can be the hands and feet of Jesus is to come alongside people uh, and help them. So that's our main focus here. Um, so the way we're going to do that is this is our, this is our second DC-8 load of uh, supplies that have come in. Um, and we're sending a lot of it through the church network here on the island. Uh, we're very grateful for all of the governmental connections that we've had here on the island as well that has facilitated us doing that. Um, it's been really encouraging to see the local churches coming together. And uh, it's initially, we've sent tarp to the north end of the island um, where we know that there was damage. Um, and uh, our focus now is, uh, or has been the entire time, on Karakou. Um, we also have plans um, for Petite Martinique as well. We know that that's out there. We don't want to have that be forgotten. Paul spoke about the team's composition. He says they are here to provide as much assistance as possible. We probably have um, about 40 team members on the ground now. Uh, that number may grow a little bit in the coming days. Um, we are setting up a field hospital on Karakou Island. Uh, that field hospital is an inpatient facility, so people that are ill enough can spend the night there uh, and receive round-the-clock medical care. Um, they can see primary care doctors, they can see an emergency physician if they need to. We can treat uh, uh, fractures through this, we can treat uh, wounds, um, 
We have a pharmacy to dis distribute medications out of, um, so people can come for their healthcare needs there. We're not in a hurry to leave uh, Grenada uh, needing still. We won't. That's not our. That's not our plan. Two other team members shared their readiness to address the needs of those affected. This is this is absolutely what our organization is about. So again, it's called Samaritan's Purse, and like the Good Samaritan in the Bible, we are called to come and, and help people who are in need and to help our neighbor. And our neighbor is anyone who needs help. And so that's why we come here. So it's actually, a, for us, it's a feeling of joy. I, I mean, again, obviously, it's a very difficult situation. Uh, we understand here. And anything that we can do to help out, and again, as an emergency physician, anything I can do to help them medically, uh, that's exactly what I'm called to do. So I, I love to do that. I'm, I, I'm very sad for uh, uh, the disaster that's happened here, but I'm very happy to help. And I think that's a feeling from our whole organization. I am a retired pastor, so I am the chaplain for the team. Uh, so that's my role is to make sure they're all okay with uh, uh, the, the work that they're going to be doing. I know, speaking for everybody on the team, this is, uh, this is what we do. These are the skills and the abilities we've been given. And so we're all people who volunteer to leave on a moment's notice wherever there's a disaster. And it brings us great joy to be able to come alongside people who have lost so much, who are hurting, suffering, to bring relief and hope. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles commended the swift response to Grenada by Samaritan's Purse. My first expression is one of gratitude. Um, we have an entire team of, of individuals who are here um, to assist with the response operations um, in Kariku. And what is, what is um, very good about this group is that they're portable. They are self-sufficient, self-sustaining, all right? Um, where we had challenges in finding accommodation to facilitate our um, healthcare staff visiting Kariku, this group comes already prepared um, with all of the necessary equipment to set themselves up and remain uh, on, on site and, con and, and provide services, which, is, which is, um, is quite beneficial to us. And we are very thankful um, that they are able to hear and they were able to respond very quickly. Terence Forrester, Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs, spoke about the coordination of efforts by the Ambassador in Washington to get this relief efforts off the ground. On behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export Development, and indeed on behalf of our distinguished minister, the Honorable uh, Joseph Andel, Permanent Secretary Roxy Hutchinson, uh, we want to extend real special thanks to our ambassador based in Washington, His Excellency Charlie Francis, who really worked hard towards getting the Samaritan Purse entity to Grenada. Um, I think it's important to recognize that this is just four days after the unfortunate incident of Hurricane Beryl, that uh, a mobile hospital has been negotiated and is in now in Grenada for Karakou. So we want to really give our thanks and appreciation to Ambassador Tali Francis for mobilizing all of this with the Samaritan Purse. This brings us to the end of the GIS evening report for Friday, July 5th, 2024. Once again, I am Chris Ann Mitchell saying thank you for joining us.